We have the curious case of Ulpia Severina. I, I won't go into the kind of controversy surrounding the whole event. In summary, after Aurelian's death, there's no one's really sure who's supposed to succeed him, because he hasn't got any blood relatives, and the death is a bit of a shock to everyone. I've just been reminded it's uh, 20 past one in the morning. <laughs> 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 Everyone's a bit at a loss as to do after Aurelian's death. And there's about a two-month period where the army, the imperial court, and the senate work out who is supposed to be the next emperor. And they finally decide that a senator called Tacitus should become emperor. Who is quite an old man, but well-respected and seems to know what he's doing. But during that time... There's still this element of confusion about who's supposed to be emperor. And Ulpia Severina, for people not in the centre, is seen as that person to put on the coin. There are a few mints in the east, such as at Antioch, where Ulpia Severina, on the coin legend, she's given the same titles as a actual emperor would, rather than just empress. Right. I think more out of confusion and people not really knowing what to do now. So they've heard Aurelian's dead, but don't know who's supposed to replace him, and someone has to go on the coin. So the next best thing is Ulpia Severina. But I think we should definitely refrain from suddenly calling her the first Empress Regnant, because she's not known to have passed any acts. None of the literary sources mention her uh, as ruling in any way, which they most certainly would have done. And yes. So she is an emperor on paper, if not in fact. Yeah, I mean, so because we know she's an Augusta, and she had been an Augusta since 274. But, um, you know, that, and that various women in the third century did uh, did receive that title mm. but yeah he appears on these coins aurelian is no longer present indicating that he is dead by then yeah that seems to be minters you know coiners not knowing what to do you know just going with the next available person while awaiting the new emperor's announcement because that was being debated by the senate because the soldiers deferred to the senate so it's an unusual situation where I guess you can imagine, you can see why a numismatic curiosity like this would happen. But um, because they couldn't, I guess they couldn't exactly keep minting for Aurelian because he's dead. Yeah, when an emperor is dead, he ceases appearing on coins, or if he does appear on coins, it's in a deified capacity. Yeah, I don't think she counts. Yeah. So I think you will agree with me in putting her in unrankable. <laughs> yes, I would. Next, we have Tacitus, who is not related to the historian, although I'm sure he would have liked to have been. A fairly elderly senator who seems to have known what he was doing. His reign is very short. He goes to Anatolia, because there's an, a Gothic attack there, and he defeats the Goths. Then he captures a fever and dies. That's pretty much his reign in a nutshell. <laughs> Other from that, he appoints Florian, his brother? His uh, half-brother. As... It makes him his Praetorian Prefect. Yeah. There's another version of events where Zosimus says that he was killed, and the reason he gives is Tacitus had made a cousin of his, Maximinus, uh, I think the governor of Syria, maybe? Somewhere in the east. Maximinus was apparently very corrupt, and so... A bunch of discontented uh, aristocrats or notables, they collaborated with some of the assassins of Aurelian who were being hunted by Tacitus, and together they killed him and then got out of there. That's another version of his death. He did win, yes, that Gothic victory, and so he becomes the third emperor to be called Gothicus after Claudius and Aurelian. And he seems to have been well-respected, 
Although that might be because, in part because he's the choice of the Senate, and so editorial authors like Aurelius Victor are going to be very pro him compared to all the soldier emperors of the period. He apparently had some military experience, and I guess that shows in his victory over the Goths. But yeah, Tacitus, it's hard for me to say that he's any more than mediocre or okay. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think he's mediocre. He yeah. seems to have acquitted himself well, but that's it.